hiding with Samantha. Samantha Kane. You don't know what it's like. School teacher business. Who's your cover? Do you hear me, Charlie? Do you hear what I'm saying? Your memory was gone. You got confused. You bought your own cover. It was a fantasy, for Christ's sake. Samantha Kane never existed. You wrote the bloody thing. No, it's not a fantasy. I'm in the goddamn PTA. Then quit. You're an assassin working for the United States government. I don't know. I trained you. In the wake of World War II, the U.S. government is engaged in a large number of secret medical experiments designed to help win the Cold War. Developing techniques for mind control to create a so-called Manchurian candidate. What is the extent of these brainwashing experiments? How did the CIA become involved in such far-reaching and disturbing research? At the end of World War II, before it even ended, Alan Dulles and people from our intelligence community were already through Switzerland making contacts to get out Nazi scientists. As World War II ends, they not only get out rocket scientists, but they also get out some Nazi doctors who have been doing mind control research in the death camps. One of my books, originally it was called Bluebird, but I reissued it as the CIA doctors. It's about uh, 15,000 pages of documents that were declassified in the 70s, plus a ton of papers from medical journals from the 50s and 60s about CIA mind control experimentation, all totally documented. Uh, done at major institutions, Ivy League schools, including creating Manchurian candidates, uh, which is artificial multiple personality, which is the movie The Manchurian Candidate. This is fact, not fiction, described extensively in documents. A Christian TI here. Like, share, subscribe. Today I'm doing a video for all TIs to show through movies that Gangstalk is nothing more than government ran mind control, like Project Bluebird, Artichoke, MK Ultra, MK Search, MK Naomi, Stargate and popularly known as trauma-based mind control or satanic ritual abuse mind control or simply ritual abuse. Now I hear the word handlers you know used loosely around the TI community and in mind control terms a handler is someone who has you know ran torture based mind control on someone and has a uh, has programmed them to do certain things and can activate this program with you know hand gesture, hand symbol, a word set of words, sounds, colors, many different things. Very complex. Now this can be done to anybody. We start with a severe torture of a very young child, uh, usually in the range of two to three years old. The strategy is to make them highly dissociative and divide the mind so that they purposefully create multiple personalities. By abusing the child, the child splits into several personalities. Yes. How widespread are we talking? Uh, at least tens of thousands of victims, probably hundreds of thousands. What they basically do is they will get a child, and they'll start this in basic forms, it appears, by about two and a half, after the child's already been made dissociative. They'll make them dissociative not only through abuse, like sexual abuse, but also things like putting a mousetrap on their fingers and teaching the parents you do not go in until the child stops crying. Only then do you go in and remove it. The father was in the Royal Irish Rangers, assigned to Belfast, after he was murdered there in 1975. Spren Perkins adopted you, or perhaps I should say recruited you to work for Chapter, black bag operation working from the U.S. State Department. You getting this? Mr. Perkins, you lost one of your agents, whose training included, among other things, counter-assassination. And now she turns up as L of the Christmas parade. Well, that information is uh, two weeks old, Mr. President. To my knowledge, Charlene Baltimore died in my employ. Relic of the Cold War, the kind of violent operative that has since been eliminated from our ranks. You recruited this woman? For chapter, sir. The late 70s, her father was a friend of mine. I... Let's stop that. I don't want to hear that stuff. Yeah. If you take somebody uh, such as a Marine and you work on them for a period of months with uh, all kinds of interrogation techniques and brainwashing techniques, you can create artificial multiple personality and use the person in the background to go on missions and the person out front doesn't remember and this is described in great detail in documents going back to the Second World War. So what I do with that is I say that proves the reality of civilian clinical multiple personality. If you control somebody, traumatize them, threaten them, manipulate them enough, this is how the human mind reacts. Hang on a second. What? Raymond? Are you there? Yes. Sergeant Shaw? Who is this? Sergeant Raymond Shaw. Yes. Raymond Prentice Shaw. Yes. Listen. Go to the bedroom of your suite. Enter the hallway there. Go to the end and open the closet. Raymond? Hello. 
remember me? No, sir, I don't. Brilliant. This is Dr. Corey Hamden, a psychiatrist who spoke out about the government mind control back in the 90s. He discovered the ritual abuse in his patients through hypnosis. You know, they've been using hypnosis, as far as I'm concerned, you know, in the medical world back in the 1800s with people like Sigmund Freud. He's done his patients. And I want to mention him later on because this is very important. His work that he did that they covered up. Now, Dr. Corey Dunhamden worked with people all over America in one other, one other country. And what he discovered was this. What I came out of that with was a grasp of um, a variety of brainwashing methods being used all over the country. And I started to hear some similarities. And whereas I hadn't known to begin with how widespread things were, I was now getting a feel that there were a lot of people reporting some similar things and that there must be some degree of communication here. Thing going on that is very large, very well coordinated with a great deal of communication and system systematicness to what's happening. So I've gone from someone kind of neutral and not knowing what to think about it all to someone who clearly believes ritual abuse is real. Now to clip with this guy in it, I want you to notice that he is in a hypnotic trance. He's literally disassociated from consciousness. He's gone in every sense of the word. You know, he's ready to be programmed a new personality with a name and everything. Here's an example. Let's suppose that this whole front row here are multiples. And that she has a, an alter named Helen, she has one named Mary, she has one named Gertrude, she named, has one named Elizabeth, and she has one named uh, Monica. Every one of those alters may have put on it a program, perhaps designated Alpha 009. A cult person could say Alpha 009, or make some kind of hand gesture to indicate this, and get the same part out in any one of them, even though it had, they had different names that they may be known by to you. Alpha appear to represent general programming, the first kinds of things put in. Beta appear to be sexual programs. For example, how to perform oral sex in a certain way, how to perform sex in rituals, having to do with producing child pornography, directing child pornography, prostitution. Delta are killers, trained in how to kill in ceremonies. There'll also be some self-harm stuff mixed in with that. Assassination and killing. Mind control research back home intensifies. The new goal is to cause an individual to become subservient to an imposed control, to the point where he will perform acts against his will and then have no memory of the act. The search for a real-life Manchurian candidate begins. To produce such an assassin, the CIA faces two main challenges. How to induce amnesia and how to program in new behavior. In 1957, Dr. Ewan Cameron, an eminent psychiatrist in Montreal, believes he has the answers. Cameron applies his techniques under the guise of normal therapy. It was a three-part technique which started with an effort to wipe out past patterns of behavior. And this was accomplished through the use of particularly intensive, repeated, high-level electroshocks until no more convulsions could be elicited from a patient. Now, you want to know how Freemasonry ties into these satanic cults? This is the link between all these satanic cults and what is being done to mind control. This is the Masonic initiation. And this is when you become a Master Mason, the third degree. Only a Master Mason. A very low degree, okay? This is the Masonic initiation by W.L. Wimhurst. Now this is page 84, 85, 86. Nevertheless, a measure of disassociation does occur naturally in even the most healthy and well-organized people. And of cases of abnormal psychic looseness of constitution, we need not speak. It occurs in sleep, when the consciousness may be vividly active, whether in ordinary or disordinary manner. People travel in their sleep. It occurs at time of illness or violent shock. It may be induced by alcohol or drugs. Anesthetic revelation is a well-recognized phenomenon. Under any of these conditions, these may be a complete ecstasis of consciousness, standing out or away of the ego from the physical body. Apparitions and even action at a distance are well-accredited facts. Such as phenomena are explicable only upon the superstitions of the existence of the subtler vehicle than the gross body, of the fact that the consciousness becomes temporarily transferred from the latter to the former, and the two are capable of conjoint function in complete independence of the physical brain and body. 
he goes on to say, A master, however, is one who has outgrown the income capacities to which the undeveloped average man is subject. And that's a master mason. Unlike the latter, he is in the full knowledge and control of all his parts, whether his physical body be awake or wrapped in sleep. He maintains unbroken consciousness. He is able to He's able at will to shut off consciousness of temporal affairs and apply it to superphysical ones. He can thus function at a distance from his body, whether upon the mundane or upon higher planes of the cosmic ladder. Initiation always occurs when the physical body is in a stance in a state of trance or sleep, and when the temporarily liberated consciousness has transferred to a higher travel. This is commonly called Kabbalah or Kabbalah Tree of Life, the system of Raising your chakras, also known as Thoth's tree of life. You know, the Egyptian god Thoth, who wrote the Egyptian Book of the Dead with all the rituals about cannibalism and torture and killing babies and heating up their body parts and side cauldrons. Yeah, you know, I went into detail in this in my video, Kabbalah Exposed as Satanism. It's on my Exposed Evil channel. I'll begin sexually abusing my offspring. I'll begin to do things like, um, have them drink blood. What's the difference between this kind of program and cult type abuse and satanic abuse and the kind of cults with the candles and the... Kind of this, this type of programming will be done in the cults with candles and all of the rest. My impression is this is simply done in people where they have great access to them or their bloodline and their parents are in it where they can be raised in it from an early age. If they are bloodline, they are the chosen generation. If not, they are expendable, and they are expected to die and not get well. And there will be booby traps in your way if they're non-bloodline people, that when they get well, they will kill themselves. Now, in the next scene, you're going to see Indy be forced to drink blood and go under a state of trance, which they call the Black Sleep of Kalima. And this is the pagan goddess Kalima in Hindu mysticism. Same thing as Satanism. Same thing as mind control. You can see he's put into a trance. And the young boy who's his friend in the movie can't understand what's going on because Indy won't snap out of it until he's hit with extreme pain and the boy burns him. She began to remember episodes of sexual abuse at the hands of her father. Those memories then turned into vivid recollections of satanic rituals. It was premeditated and systematic, methodical, fragmenting of our personalities and then using other children and sacrifices to terrorize us. Children were murdered? Mm-hmm. What happened? One time there was a baby there and um, they stabbed the baby and killed it and we all had to drink blood. Now you got to understand that this is very, very popular, more popular than you understand in people's religions. You know, we call it satanic ritual abuse. We call it Satanism, but it's literally called different things all around the world. This is practiced in Buddhism, Hinduism, Wicca, witchcraft, many different religions, shamanism, Santeria, voodoo, the worship of Zeus, the worship of Saturn, the worship of Odin, you can go to Egypt, the worship of Isis, the worship of Osiris. These rites are practiced everywhere you go, anywhere in the world, and they all were practiced at Babylon. And it's right in the Bible, Genesis 11:8. God, you know, God confused the languages and spread everyone across the world. 
because they were practicing this religion at Babylon. And when he spread them across the world, this is when all these religions spread across the world. This is what is connecting all these religions. Astral projection, incest, rape, murder, sacrifice. Now check this book out, Dr. Neil T. Anderson, Release from Bondage. It's 230 and 231. Transge transgenerational cults are those perpetrated through family generations. They are not exclusive to Satanism, like I said, but may be based on other forms of religious tradition. Children brought up in such environments often view cult activities as the norm. Power, heritage, and programming keep the transgenerational, transgenerational cults flourishing. Some of these cults engage in prayer, ritual, mind control, sexual orgies, child sexual abuse, torture, manslaughter, sacrifice. So when you were brought up in this, this kind of evilness, did you just think it was normal? Um, I blacked out a lot of the memories I had um, because of my multiple personality disorder. But yes, I mean, it's like if you grow up with something, you think it's normal. Mm -hmm. My next guest was used also in worshiping the devil, participated in human sacrifice rituals, rituals and cannibalism. She says her family has been involved in rituals for generations. She is currently in extensive therapy, suffers from multiple personality disorder, meaning she's blocked out many of the terrifying and painful memories of her childhood. Meet Rachel, who is also in disguise to protect her identity. You come from generations of ritualistic uh, abuse? Um, yes, my family has an extensive family tree, and they keep track of who's been involved and who hasn't been involved. And it's gone back to, like, 1700. And so you were? Right. Maybe. I was born into a family that believes in this. And, and this is a, this is, does everyone else think it's a nice Jewish family? Freud, so Sigmund Freud came out with a, something called the seduction theory. And he um, published something on, about it. And it was rejected by mainstream doctors and everyone. Basically, everyone rejected it, and then he changed it up. And said, you know, he basically changed his whole story. He began with saying that basically satanic ritual abuse was the cause for mental illness. Sexual abuse of children was the cause of mental illness. It's not always done in a ritualistic fashion, okay? And a lot of the time, if it's incestuous, the parent was also, you know, in their life abused at one point. And the same way if it were any other adult. It's very likely that the adult was abused as a child themselves. Now, this is the Assault on Truth, Freud's Suppression of the Seduction Theory by Jeffrey Mossoff Mason. This man did a great work writing this book. Very happy because it's very hard to get Freud's original seduction theory in words to see what he actually wrote. And this man has it in his book. It is true that we feel impelled to make a synthesis when we survey the number of striking conditions that we have come to know. The fact that in order to form a hysterical symptom, a defense effort against distressing ideas... The, against distressing ideas must be present. This idea must exhibit a logical or associative, associ associative connection with an unconscious memory through a few or many intermediate links, which themselves too remain unconscious at the moment. That this unconscious memory must have a sexual content. That is that its content must be an experience which occurred during a certain infantile period of life. So basically, sexual abuse when you're a child or an infant. So. This is the same thing, like, you know, multiple personality disorder. We know it's a defense mechanism for things like this. And it is known that memory suppression is, you know, a light form of PTSD or multiple personality disorder, or as is known now as disassociative identity disorder. Now, to give you the, you know, an idea of what can happen to someone with this type of abuse, you know, we have to hear this. I mean, people are out here suffering. You gotta hear this. People say they don't, you know, they can't hear this type of things. It hurts their heart. We gotta hear this. We gotta know what's going on. We need it to stop. It says here, thus, in one of my cases, the circumstance that the child was required to stimulate the genitals of a grown-up woman with his foot was enough to fixate his neurotic attention for years on his legs into their function, and finally to produce a hysterical paraplegia. He couldn't walk because of what happened to him as a child. In another case, a woman patient suffering from anxiety attacks which tended to come on at certain hours of the day could not be calmed unless a particular one of her many sisters stayed by her side at all the time. Why this was so would have remained a riddle if analysis had not shown that the man who had committed the assaults on her used to inquire at every visit whether this sister who he was afraid might interrupt him was at home. Isn't it amazing how the mind works? And just like, you know, other... You know, a psychiatrist, Sigmund Freud believed in hypnosis and getting these repressed memories through hypnosis. And me personally, as a Christian, I do not think that should be done. I think it should be done through prayer and asking Jesus Christ to heal you and when you're ready to reveal these memories to you.